<laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, I think I'm going to summarize the whole year. This video, I think, is the last thing that I show you. And um, yeah, it has been a lot of stuff coming up. The semester started, the year started with the teaching, and yeah, students did not show up. <laughs> that that can not happen. I got a new, a new set of students. So I still have Tanya, my PhD student, which is really not my student. She is now my companion in the whole uh, machine learning activities and all what we learn. So, uh, but yeah, I got a couple of students more <laughs> and I now know why I said I won't take more than five students at the same time. Um, we uh, do what we do always, seminars, we are going deeper into the background of certain um, machine learning models and uh, yeah and it's nice to see uh, them enjoying presenting their concepts and helping each other um, while finding out how to deal with new programs and new packages uh, that is nice as well they discovered that my blackboard is a nice way to remember how much we all like uh, Harry Potter so <laughs> collaboration so I don't know if you remember I have a collaboration with a the tour with a, a machine learning lab that is called the Ross lab and um, we uh, we learn from them all the machine learning um, the heavy theory and the practical and they have been amazing uh, showing us everything and having all the patients to show us everything. The collaboration, it means that we have to go almost every Wednesday to Garhin and it's a long trip but it's a nice day. We learn a lot. Yeah, we did the collaboration for the winter school, we helped there. Um, that means we were preparing the classroom and preparing a couple of yummy cookies to receive them. Um, as you can see, they are scientific cookies. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and we had a blast. We um, I'm still learning. I think I will never learn all this perfectly. Every new presentation, even though many things have we heard already, we still learn in a new, a new angle. Each person presents differently. This year we have a visit of another scientist. Uh, he was here for, I think, two and a half months, three months. And um, yeah, and we started a collaboration with Colombia. So I'll be going this year to give a talk there and um, it's going to be interesting. Um, it's a completely different area, it's um, pharmacovigilance, and his name is Carlos, and um, we will be working with them um, doing some research on pharmacovigilance, which is a different, a completely different area of, of research. I've never done that, so it's going to be an interesting uh, application for our bacteriotoxins in the lab. So the first thing <laughs> it was um, receiving the, first organizing the place because we inherited the lab from another uh, previous researcher and a lot of the stuff was there. So we organized it, cleaned it and we received our big machine, uh, flow cytometer. And uh, yeah, and the technical person was really, like he had a lot of problems with that installation, but we did great, he did great. He explained to me how the machine works inside, how does it look inside, which I find that fascinating. Um, and yeah, and that's, uh, I am. And of course, after that, we had to have the training. The training, um, we kind of like, I already knew it, but I wanted my students to see it. Um, it was uh, nice to remember and to see what the new features uh, have been done or have been built in, in, the, in the machine. Yeah, we did a lot of planning for experiments for the next phase of the project. Um, some of them were purchases that were terrible and some that we had to reclaim our money back and some of them um, we're still testing but in much better. I will tell you all about it. Um, in other videos and more detail. And um, we did our first um, our first clonings in the lab, which is uh, good because they not always work, but this, they worked and we sent our first sequences to be sequenced. 
after the purchase of the machine we had some money left and we were able to buy a new machine called a uh, cell drop and it's allowing us to count the cells um we have had some troubles with that but that's uh, another story but in general we are working with it in any year <laughs> there are certain disruptions that came up <laughs> one of them was um i got corona and i was almost 14 days positive and I was not healthy. So it's not like one of those that you don't get sick. Then we had a lot of um, strikes from the uh, transportation system here, which made it very difficult for me uh, and for my students to go to the lab. And at the end of the year, like nothing else could happen. Um, a snowstorm came and I was trapped in Munich for about five days. And then once I got home, I could not leave because the train was still not working we had the chance to promote our lab one of the places where we went was the doctor Med. and uh, doctor Med is a program that the university the medical students in collaboration with the medical faculty um, uh, organize and they want to present all the different areas where the medical students could do their um kind of like mds or medical doctor and um, yeah um, we had our space we placed our poster and we yeah and then we um, waited for them to come um, Tanya was with me it was a Saturday which was a little bit um, tiring more because the week was really full but we made it and um, yeah and a lot of students came a lot of them got scared with our poster. <laughs> our poster was uh, written in um, pseudo code, so like in Python, uh, but with normal words. So as soon as they saw the code, they got scared, which is funny to see it, uh, but at the same time allow us to select those students that are really willing to learn uh, coding. Um, I had as well an invitation to a seminar called iTarget, and to show the importance of tidy data. I did a seminar for them as a workshop. I had the beautiful help of a student who is active in the Open Science Initiative in Medicine, Max. Thanks, Max. It was really nice to see all of them. They are all from the immunology and, and they all participated, so that made it even better. Of course, social events can never fail. And we had different ones. We had in the year, it's about like four social events that we had, like big ones. Um, one was a fashion, because they celebrate fashion. It's kind of like a Halloween, but in spring, I call it that way. So they dress up and it's not creepy though. It's more like the idea is to like shoo away the winter. And, uh, and yeah. I don't know, it's a tradition. I don't one of the other students, she defended her thesis and as tradition here, they give something called the Doctor Hood. So it's basically a kind of like self-made hat with all the things that you can put about the person, about their, their journey in their PhD. Um, oh yeah, Summerfest. Summerfest, uh, I showed you last year um, a couple of images. This time we had to do it in the back, but do you remember the building destruction that is taking place in the backyard of our institute well we had to do it there because we didn't have any other place so but it was fun a lot of food like always like everything else and of course at the end of the year we have the uh, christmas party um it was really sweetly decorated um the person's responsible andreas thank you um it was really really nice and um everybody helps always bringing um bringing food yeah i will leave you with some of the images of what is going the destruction that is going behind our our institute and you can see um the advances that they have in the back of with the building um yeah that's it that's basically all of it have tons of ideas to show you um, working on it 
Um, I'm not sure if I can keep up with the weekly videos. I'll be receiving two more master students um, in February. No, in at the end, uh, in the middle of March. Um, so it's going to be busy and um, yeah, and a lot of funny things going on. And I really hope I'm not taking so long this time. <laughs> So sorry. I keep thinking about you though. <laughs> okay, so have a nice day and until soon. Okay, bye.